If you like this video, please go ahead and consider hitting that like button. Subscribe if you have not already, and please, by all means, share this video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Hirsch London. But before that, this video is brought to you by Jonathan and Sipper Buffo. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Hirsch London map. You can find it over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Now, let me read you some of the description. Here you are in the heart of the villages of Hirschleiden and Fitchenburg, somewhere in the state of... Uh, the state of... I can't pronounce that. On the edge of the Black Forest. Inspired by real places, the region was always green, offers plenty of pastures, as well as fields of all sizes. Many farms are dedicated to raising dairy cows, but not only that, everything is possible in this place. On this map, you'll find 54 fields, 20 meadows, 14 farms and properties, and one forest area. There is a train system, multiple cell points, production are modified and adapted to the map. No sugar cane or cotton. So those two crops have been stricken from the map. This map also includes German license plates. You can use the buildings when purchasing the corresponding plots. All decorations on the farm buildings can be sold, with the exception of the BGA, as well as some fences and electrical poles. Have fun, says the map author. Now this map does have some required mods. Those are the Bavarian Farm Pack, Meadow Fence Pack, Barn, Old Barn Pack, Farm Cow Farm Pack, Landsberg Farm, Rybach Farm Buildings, Pigsty with Garage, Lower Bavarian Farm Pack, Old Grain Mill, and the Schwabenhof Pack. With that, let's load in. Now, in addition to those required mods, we are going to be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. Now, I'll tell you, if you load this map up in farm, manager mode, or start from scratch, you'll find that all the farms are built out exactly how you're going to see them here in new farm mode. With the exception, you do not own any land, nor do you have any starting machinery in those alternate game modes. Now, if you do happen to load this map up with a lower end system, for example, I loaded this map up with a system that uses AMD integrated graphics, and I had zero issues whatsoever in maintaining a solid 60 frames per second pretty much wherever i was on this map with one minor exception and that was when i was up at the dense forest area i was seeing a little bit of frame drop but other than that it was a good solid 60 fps everywhere so unless you're really going to do some heavy forestry you should have no issues whatsoever with respect to maintaining a high quality frame rate on just about anything that will run farm sim let's go ahead and take a look at the map now this map is going to have a lot of grass. And as the description said, there are several farms on this map. If we take a look at our farmland screen, you see we start by owning farmland ID 86. That is the main starting farm, if you will. It's basically a farmhouse. And then there are a few buildings off to the side. 86 is exclusively the farmhouse. These buildings are actually tied to farmland ID 52. Now, if you buy Farmland ID 52 for $370,000, you will be able to delete the buildings here at the starting farm. But basically, when we start out in new farmer mode, all we own is 86, the farmhouse, and 51, the small field right next to it. Now, we take a look at the other farms that are going to be available on this map. We have a sheep farm that is going to be available at Farmland ID 87. For $121,000. In addition, there is a cow farm located at Farmland ID 85 for $233,000. There's another cow farm located at Farmland ID 83 and 84 for $89,000. Right across the street at Farmland ID 82, there is another cow farm for $296,000. There's going to be a cow shed at Farmland ID 35 for $170,000. An arable farm located at farmland ID 79 and 80. This will be bought for $122,000 and $61,000 respectively. 
There is going to be a cow shed at Farmland ID 79 for $119,000. And then there is a cow and chicken farm located at Farmland ID 75, 76, and 77. And then lastly, there is a cow farm at Farmland ID 88 and 80, where 88 is the farmhouse and 80 is the actual cow farm area. And that can be bought for $270,000. $931. There is a BGA located right here. It is on the unbuyable land. So you will not be able to buy that unless you use a command to buy all land on the map. And then the forest I talked about where I was seeing some low frames or lower frames on that integrated graphic system is going to be at Farmland ID 89. Let's go take a look at our Farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the Bible farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any field or fields, what is included. Then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost us? We then also can compare that to the field calculator screen. We're going to see the specific sizes of each particular field. See most of these fields are going to be somewhere between one to two and a half hectares in size with a few fields going a little bit further than that. For example, field 52 is 4.48. With respect to our crop counter, we do have the standard basic crop counter available to us here on this map. And if we look down through our prices screen, you will see that we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our basic crops that are included on the map, as well as our eggs, wool, and milk, and our silage, hay straw, and grass. If we continue down through all the base game production items, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of those as well, which is always a good thing to see. Now, with respect to bulk lime, we do have the ability to buy bulk lime. And then we also do have the ability of getting rid of our stones. So if we are playing with stones enabled, we will have the ability to take those to the debris crusher. Those playing with the farm production pack will have the ability to sell your wash root crops. But those wishing to get into the platinum expansion productions, well, you're going to be, well, much, much disappointed because you are going to have to put down your own sell point in order to sell any of those productions. But the premium expansion productions and crops, they're all good to go because you can sell each and every one of those. In addition, if you are playing with pumps and hoses, you will be able to sell your separated manure. And those playing with straw harvest, your hay and straw pellets, We'll also have multiple points of sale. We start out new farm mode with a modest list of starting machinery. It's all owned. None of it is leased and it's all fairly well maintained. We do not have any animals at the start. We do have contracts available on this map and we do not own any productions at the start either. Then lastly, this map does not have any collectibles. Let's jump back up here because, well, I have went and forgot to show you the Alpine soil map. So this map is making use of the Alpine soil map that does come with the precision farming mod. So let's go ahead and see, go ahead and see how it is being applied to these fields. Our soil map is mostly composed of loam and sandy loam with a little bit of loamy sand and a little bit less of our silty clay. Now let's go ahead and see what our starting fleet looks like. We have the Massey Ferguson 7S155 medium tractor. We have our Welger DK115 trailer. We have the Horsch Torino 3FX cultivator. We have the Nordstein HK25 NS3030 cedar and Power Hero combination. We also have the Amazon ZATS3200 fertilized spreader. We've got the F240 front mower. We have the Pottinger Alpine Hit. 4.4H Tether. We have our GA4731 Wind Rower and our Pottinger Impress 125F Pro Round Baler. Now, it's interesting to note, we do not have a harvester or harvester header included with our starting equipment. And then lastly, we have a 650 kilogram front weight. With respect to mods and DLCs, this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements. Now we start out here when we load the map up for the very first time at a bus stop, I believe that is. 
And then we are here at this church. And we can get a little bit of an idea of kind of what this map is going to visually look like. By just doing a little quick look around. We want to tab now over to our starting farm. Now, as I mentioned, our starting farm, well, we have our farmhouse located right here. And this is going to have our sleep trigger. And I have gone ahead and purchased the farmland ID 52, which includes these sheds. You can indeed sell everything here at the starting farm, assuming you own farmland ID 52. If you don't, you can sell the house and that is it. If you buy a farmland ID 52, you can sell the sheds as well as the deco items that include this pole and these utility lines running over to the main pole at the street. Our starting field is going to be located right across the street right here. And that is pretty much what we start out with. Now let's go ahead and take a look at all of the other farms. I have already taken the liberty of buying those farmlands. So just north of the starting area, we have the sheep farm. Sheep farm includes this open shed. Then we have our sheep area here. 45 sheep are going to be available in this pen. I believe this is our wool point, but it does feel a little small. Then we have our food trough right there. Now, this particular farmhouse does not actually have a sleep trigger associated with it. So if you are going to make use of this as your farmhouse for sleeping, then you are going to have to put down your own cell point or sleep trigger. Sorry. Now we've made our way down to the south a little bit. This is where we started out. And we went up and talked to the sheep area here. And now we have made our way to the south and west a little bit to this cow farm, which is just north of field 43. So we do have our sleep and wardrobe trigger located here at the farmhouse, which is right across the street from then our cow barn. So we do have our silo set up here. So we have our dump point and our fill pipe. We're gonna have to see our milk trigger located right there. Inside here we have our food trough. We have our slurry point. And then we have our cow drop off point where we can have a total of 80 cows in this particular barn. And that is going to be basically this small cow farm. Do have a little three bay garage that we can make use of as well as this shed over here. And then we might as well just kind of run over to the next set of farms because they are literally right here. So we have now made our way over to this area. And if you crawl from the earlier segment, we basically have two farms, one located on either side of this street. So we have our first farmhouse located right here with our sleep and wardrobe trigger. We have our silo dump and fill point. Oh, 
this is coming up as a hayloft as opposed to a silo then we have our cow barn so we have our manure heap we have a nice bank barn here so we can come up and store bales and whatnot up here We have our milk trigger. We have our cow delivery point for 45 cows. We have our food trough, our straw trigger, and our slurry point. Now if we go under the bank barn road. We also have another shed over here. And that is pretty much this cow farm. We're going to go across the street now to the other farm. Where we have our sleep and wardrobe trigger. Our farm silo. Let me located here, our fill point and our dump point. We have our food trigger. 45 cows as well in here. And then we have our milk trigger. That's our food trigger from down below. So we can come up here and we can store bales and whatnot. And then just drop them down that chute. This particular farm has a fuel trailer or fuel tank. And that is going to be this farm. Now right up the street... Then we also have a cow farm or a cow barn all by itself over here. So we were right here. We made our way up and around, and now we are located right here. 80 cows for this barn. We have our slurry point. We have our food trough. We have our milk trigger. And this is our silo fill trigger. I tell you what, this area is a little misleading. Is this a silo or is this a food area? So I believe this, that's the trap door. So this is going to be your food area. This is your silo, but it appears that as if these triggers overlap. So this technically probably serves two purposes. You're probably going to be able to come in here and feed your cows, and you're probably going to be able to come in here and dump your grain. Ooh. 
make our way back up to the road. This is, of course, where we all started the map tour. And right up the hill from that, we have another cow farm. So we have our sleep trigger and our wardrobe trigger at the house across the street. Right up from the church where we started. Then our cow barn is over here. It's going to be our silo dump and fill point. Nice storage over here in this shed. Another shed for storage. Now, I think I misspoke and called this cow farm. This is going to be an arable farm, but don't worry. Just up the street, we have another cow barn. Now, in theory, Maybe that barn and farm down there are connected to this one. But the way the map author has set all this up, they can be run as independent operations because they are separate viable farm areas. So we have our slurry point around the back. We have our food trough and straw trigger here inside. Another 45 cows. And then our milk trigger right there. But we're not done. No, we're not. Because over here, we have a pig area. and a cow area. So we have two different animals here. 120 cows in this barn. Now I made our way up to here. So we were here. Now over here to this big cow barn, we have the pig area and the corresponding farm house. So we have our food trough and our slurry point, our manure heap. And I would assume our milk, slurry, manure heap, right? Use our visual clues. 25 pigs are going to be available for this structure. We have water, we have food, we have our slurry. Cram those porkers in here. This is going to be our silo or something. Water tank. Okay. It's going to be a fill point for our water tank. Something we haven't seen at any of these particular farms has been um, workshop triggers. There's our pig. And then across the street. We have our small farmhouse with our sleep trigger. Now we were just over here beside fields 52 and 32, but now we've made our way over here to the northwest portion. And here we have the BGA. We have our greenhouse here. We have our animal dealer and right across the street from the animal dealer, we have the last farm they're going to take a look at. 
So this farm does has, as we've already mentioned, a large greenhouse. Greenhouse is one of the productions obviously built into the map. We have our farm silo, dump and fill point. We have our wardrobe and sleep trigger. And then I like to kind of think that the next few buildings that we're going to come to are all basically interconnected with that farmhouse. So down here we have our chickens. 360 chickens available. We have our egg point and we have our food dump station. Now I know some folks are turned off by having a bunch of required mods, but I do say that on this map, the required mods really do help fit the map to the region. At least I feel that they do. 80 cows in this barn. And we have our slurry points. We have our food trough. We have our milk trigger. And outside here we have our fill pipe and our dump station for our silo. And that, folks, is basically going to be the combination of all of the viable farms that are available here on this map. And as I mentioned, all of these farms, you can pretty much sell everything at all of them, including various deco elements. So if you don't like any one particular farm, once you buy it, you can level it to the ground and build it up however you should so wish. Now I made my way back over here to our starting farm because this is where I like to start our aerial tours of. That way folks have a bit of a frame of reference as to where we are. So the church is going to be off in the distance in that general direction. That's where we load in for the very first time. Then we have our starting field in farmhouse and then these buildings are again tied to field 52, which in this case is planted in grass. To the north of that, we had our sheep farm that we took a look at. And then right across the street from that, we have our sawmill. Our sawmill is one of 11 different productions that are available here on this particular map. So we have our pallet spawn point. We have our log drop off and sell point. We have our interactive trigger, and then we have our wood chip loading point here. And up on the hill, well, that is going to be the large forest that is available on this map. You can see the vast amounts of grass that is going to be available here. If you buy this, this land, you're going to have access to a whole lot of grass. And there are several cow farms on this map, so it's a bit fitting. Now we're coming over here to a couple different productions. Here we have our carpentry. So we have our pallet point. We have a wood, cell, and dump point. And we have our interactive icon. This is going to be our chocolate factory. The chocolate factory is going to have our pallet point there. And our dump point here. Across the street is actually our spinnery. So we have our interactive icon, our pallet point, and our dump point for our spinnery. This is going to be our vehicle shop. So we have our dealer trigger located here. Our buy trigger for the dealership is going to be located right at the door. And let's go ahead and get our Mahindra. And we'll just see where our vehicles spawn. We spawn here on the back side of the shed or of the, the dealership. Not the biggest area, I'm going to admit. 
I don't think this is exactly the biggest area for vehicles to spawn at. But given the sizes of these fields, other than the grass fields, I don't think you're really going to need to buy really big, massive machinery. This is also where you're going to find your fueling point for the map. Now, in addition to the production that we've already talked about, this map includes a grain mill, a cheese factory. We've already seen the chocolate factory. We have also then a bakery, a dairy, carpentry, sugar mill, sawmill, a spinnery, the VGA, and the large greenhouse. So here we're back to our starting farm location, our sheep farm, our sawmill, and we're going to make our way to the south. And this is going to be our grain mill. So we have our interactive icon here. We have our dump point. We have our pallet point for our flour. And if we continue to make our way to the south. Well, we've got a few things going on. So here we've got our cell point. And this particular cell point is going to be named Fletchenberg, right? And then right next to that, we have the GLW buy and cell point. Then on the other side of that, we're going to have our train depot and our rent train trigger. So this is going to be a cell point for GLW and also a loading point, or more or less, it's a train transfer station. Because here you have your train transfer station, and here you have your rent train. And speaking of the train, well, there it is. Right there. Just a quick little short train. And we have the edge of the map also pretty darn close. Directly in front of us, we have the third farm that we took a look at when we were taking a look around at the various farms. And if you recall, we took this road over here to this collection of farms. But for this flyover, we're just going to continue to the west to get over to our biomass heating plant. Cell point, and that's going to be a cell point for logs and wood chips. Right next to that, we now have our sugar mill. A little bit different texture on that. We have our interactive icon, our pallet spawn point, and our dump point. We have a farmer's market cell point and our buy point for lime. We make our way over here to the Black Forest's edge. This is going to be the other end of the map train point. Made our way up the western side of the map. You see overall the map has fairly subtle rolling fields. Not a lot of huge inclines on these fields, so it shouldn't be too terrible difficult to work the fields with machinery. Maybe that's a little bit underpowered. Here we have our BGA. So we have our fill point for our digestate. We have our dump point for our slurry. We have our digester or interactive icon and two three-sided silage bunkers. Also up here, we have our animal dealer. So our animal dealer there, our animal dealer Bale cell point is there. And we have, remember, this farm with the greenhouse. And then these corresponding buildings. I would encourage you to go and kind of wander through the forest area there. It's really well done. Now, with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such, 
we are going to be giving the map a full point. Here we have our stone crusher hidden away inside this little shed. We have our dairy located right here. We have our interactive icon, our dump point, and our pallet spawn point. We have our dump point. We have our pallet spawn point for the cheese dairy right next door to the regular dairy. Then we have our bakery. We have our interactive icon. Our dump and pallet point. Right down for the bakery, we have a little bit of a restaurant sell point. Sorry about that. Then we have another cell point located right here. And this particular cell point is going to be our supermarket. And that, folks, is pretty much the gist of this map. Now, with respect to the ability to sell all remaining crops, animal outputs, and productions. We are going to be giving the map a full point there because we do indeed have the ability to sell all of the basing crops that are included with the map. We do not deduct points because sugarcane or cotton have been stricken from the map. And we can also sell all the basing productions and animal outputs. With respect to the farms being customizable, all the farms you can buy the land on and completely sell all of the buildings. So yes, all of the farms are completely and totally customizable. Buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique. Now I will have to say that some of these required mods are not quite using that new technique in my opinion. When you get into some of these cow barns, they are a bit low in the overall texture resolution, and they are using a bit of some flat textures as compared to some other buildings that are on this map. So we are going to give the map three quarters of a point there. Triggering interactive areas being clearly marked. I would go with a full point, but we did have that one cow barn that seemed to have two triggers overlapping one to store the silo, one to feed the cows. So again, another quarter point off there. Would have been nice to have had a little bit more distinction as to exactly what is going on at that location. But overall, that's going to give this map a total score of four and a half out of five. A very respectable score, nonetheless. I'd love to know what you all think down in the comments below with respect to this particular map. And until next time, happy farming.